Hello and welcome to this tutorial on using the Airwise feature in Air Magnet Survey Pro. The Airwise feature allows you to access advice about AP deployments based upon RF data collected during a site survey or based upon planning activities. To begin using Airwise, I will first come to the display screen and select which survey data set I would like to use. For today's example, I'm going to use my planning activity, which is labeled as a virtual survey in the display window. After I have selected the data that I want to use, I can come to the Airwise tab. When I first enter the Airwise area, I can see an overview of all of the requirements that are currently set up for my deployment. The Overview screen allows me to see all of my requirements in one place. I can also change any of my requirements by clicking on their threshold value. I can now type in whatever threshold I would like. If I select any of my requirements, I can now see my floor plan on the screen. Now that we're out of the requirements overview, let's look at the main areas of the screen. The primary area will be used to show a pass or fail heat map based upon the particular airwise requirement that I've highlighted on the left. You'll note that it shows me colors for the pass and fail criteria that I have set. In this case, a large portion of my overall floor plan is green. In other words, it passes my signal coverage condition. However, I can also see areas that fail shown in yellow, and my percentage of good area is only 89.2%. On the left hand side I have a list of my current requirements, whether it passes or fails, as well as what percentage of the current area passes the threshold I've set. Below the requirements area I can select whatever filters that I need based upon either channel or SSID. My next step in calibrating airwise is to set the intended coverage area. Note that on the right hand side of my building, I have an area that is green, but actually outside of the building itself. I don't want this exterior area to be counted in any of my pass-fail percentages or criteria. To compensate for this, I will set the coverage area. First, I will use the rectangular coverage area to select the main part of the building. Next, I will use the Arbitrary Region tool to handle the one odd part of my conference room that sticks out from the rest of the building. There. As you can now see, the calculated airwise area of my building only includes the floor plan itself. The area to the right that was actually outside my building is no longer included. You may also have noticed the percentage of good area number adjusted for some of my metrics because the area that was outside the building is no longer included in that calculation. When running the Airwise requirements, it's highly valuable to only choose one band at a time. Because the propagation rates for 5 GHz and 2.4 GHz are different, viewing each individually will give you the best view of whether or not a particular Airwise requirement is met or not met on each band. As you can see, as I move between selecting 2.4, 5, or 2.4 and 5, I get a very different impression of whether or not I'm passing my signal coverage requirement. Most particularly, looking at both bands at the same time can give me the erroneous opinion that my coverage is good everywhere, and I might believe that my 5 GHz coverage will also be okay. As you can note when I select the 5 GHz only band, my 5 GHz coverage for this plan is not very good. I have large areas that fail my signal coverage metric. 
At the bottom of my heat map display, I can see the same requirement that I set originally on the requirements view. If I need to, I can change this metric directly on this screen, and that will allow me to see the resulting change in the heat map for airwise metrics with multiple requirements. All requirements will be shown. This can allow you to adjust requirements as need be to view the resulting heat maps. If I need to go back to my overview to view all requirements at once, I can simply click on Requirements Overview at the top of the Airwise Requirements list. Once I have set all my requirements the way I want them to be, I can save this particular requirement profile into Survey Pro. This will allow me to use this profile in other projects and at later times. To save a policy, I can use the Policy Control buttons at the top of the Requirement Policy area. To save my new policy, I will click on the New Policy button. I will give my policy a name and click OK. You'll note that the policy name has changed to be the new name that I've described instead of the default policy name that was originally there. If I need to make any changes to this policy, I can do so and save those changes by use of the Save Policy button. In addition to the specific metric threshold that I can set for a given airwise category, I can also change the overall percentage that I consider a pass or fail by clicking on the Edit Pass Fail Thresholds button. By default, airwise expects 100% of the coverage to pass a particular metric for it to be considered a pass. If I change this to a different number, that will now be the number that Airwise uses to determine pass or fail. As you can see, by drastically lowering my threshold for single coverage from 100% to 60%, my pass-fail criteria for this item has changed from a fail to a pass. To change what policy I'm currently using, I can pull on the drop-down menu and see all policies that are currently saved into Airwise. In addition to the policies that I've created, there are also preset policies from equipment vendors that are pre-built into Airwise and that can be used to vet a site for those particular requirements. Thanks for watching, and thank you very much for choosing Air Magnet Survey Pro.